timers, you know, the ones that are in history books have to be consistent with their characters as, a, as in history books up until the time the ring of fire hits. And then after that, they have to be consistent with how their character might have reacted with the changes happening as a result of the uptimers coming in and changing history. Yeah, so it's a very simple. It's yeah. a very it's, it's a very else. it's a very it's a very bonsai yeah. it's a very bonsai little universe. You know, you create a little bonsai tree that looks like a real tree. The, this universe is a very bonsai little universe. It's it's very precise in the way and in order to have five million words in print and, and keep it going with the consistency that's managed to maintain uh, is, it, you know, is, is a real tribute to the editorial board, which several members are here present, uh, to Eric for being able to put something like this together. I mean, the good sense to up. get the right people to do it for me. <laughs> 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 On the subject of the conching machines, uh, can you be more particular as to exactly How what they are doing? What they're doing is they're grinding the and chocolate, heating. they're grinding, heating, and crystallizing the chocolate to a very precise uh, structure. It's a okay. it's a combination of the, the reason I it's ask, a combination of tempering and grinding in the, the same process. The reason I ask is some of what it sounded like, and you know what. Rick was saying before, reminded me a bit of the machines that they use in the vulcanized <coughs> rubber yeah. processing, right. the macerating Absolutely. machines and the yeah. like. It's, it's and a very that I've documented, you know, yeah. that's in the 1911 Encyclopedia Britannica, and thus, you know, very even if the conching machines aren't described. There's stuff that they can Chocolate look cheese. at and use as models. <laughs> okay, we'll start here and then yeah. we'll try, try oh, yeah. this, this and try this. We have a question, question over here. Okay. Yeah. All right. Say you've got your uh, machinist who's willing to work with you on a conscious machine. Right. Say you've got your sources for getting your raw materials and whatnot. How much experimentation and how much, you know, experimental materials would it take for you to figure out that process? To where you can you know have a formula and how, how how much how much investment would it take to get to where you have a working formula? I haven't done it, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, uh, sure. uh, say, um, the, if I was writing it, I would use hand wavium and then it would be in the book. Uh, uh, I so would, with respect, I'd say it's an indeterminate question rather than lots. Yeah. Lots is sort of the automatic, intuitive answer. Mm -hmm. But it might be, and it might be lots. It also might be you get it on next Thursday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the, the, it's indeterminate <laughs> somewhere in between those two. Kind of stepping on Gork's right. money thing. Here's a picture. Oh. It's, uh, you can, we can come up and look at it later. But it's got two huge rollers. It's called a, um, and the Mont Melangu. Oh, that, oh, that's the that's okay. the, the malt the malt the no, liquor maker. Melangu? It's the it's a chocolate liqueur maker. G U R they do, is the they end. do this and then they put it in the conching machine. So. Yeah, but um, this is part of it. it's got big stone rollers, but they're it's heated by uh, um, steam. Okay, it was a uh, they call it turn of the century. They don't say what century. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, anyway, stepping on Gork's money thing. At one point, the Aztecs used cocoa beans as money. Mm -hmm. Okay, as a matter of fact. The Aztecs became very good counterfeiters at counterfeiting cocoa beans by making them out of clay and, and painting, painting them. them. <laughs> they don't taste as good, but if you've got a whole bag of cocoa beans, unless you examine every single one, you yeah. probably don't and have a whole bag. This, 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 rose, this brought to fruition an Aztec official who was in charge of counting the beans and maybe the origin of the term <laughs> bean, bean counter. <laughs> no, I'm serious. It is, but, but the real deal about conching is it's so proprietary. Uh, uh, and, and you can do it different ways, and different types of conching produce different flavors of chocolate. If you, if you compare a Toblerone to a Lent, to a, to a, uh, uh, to a Hershey, to, to, a a, to a Nestle, to what's the Dutch yeah. one? Drost. Drost. Or Vosage. Or Vosage. Vosage. Yeah, everybody, yeah. Everybody's chocolate is slightly different, and it's because everybody's proprietary process is slightly different. Yes. Um, what I was going to say, kind of in reference to that, is that it's not so much the um, it's all the ratio that you use. As long as you have the sugar, the cocoa butter, and the powder 
in there, it'll all at least give you chocolate. Just the quality will be different depending on the ratio you use. And and your skill at the technique. Yeah. Okay. So that's the difference between um, you know Sally's chocolate shop and and something down on in Manhattan on the you know. The other thing, I hadn't thought about this question, but um, a lot of this involves how much money you can get someone willing to invest in it. And there are one thing about the 17th century, it, it, this is not medieval times, there are people with lots of money. There are banks. And there are banks. And this is the kind of thing you could probably get investors to sink quite a bit of money in really oh, quickly. OPM would come in on this, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So as as, yeah, as I would think in practice you could probably get it pretty quickly because you throw enough money at things, they'll, they, it's not like they're going to try one thing and that didn't work, they'll try something else. They'll probably try about ten different ways of doing it and see which one works best. Yeah, the first part would be getting the cocoa beans into Germany or into Yeah, well, there's that. The there's a delay there. Gonna yeah. be, so it's not going to be 33, and it's no, probably right. not going to be 34. No. So I was aiming at 35 or 36, well, yeah, and I'm just because it. of the what? time it takes. Right, so you could place an order with a Spanish factor because there's certain... Exactly, but so it's still going to take two order, years to get but it. But that's going to take a two-year purchasing cycle just right. to get it physically into Germany. Right, yeah. because German has none. Right. And we're not even talking about vanilla, okay? Yeah, you like, uh, if you want to know about vanilla, it's a whole other nightmare. It might not be okay. German anyway. It might very well be Venetian. Why haven't you written that article yet? About vanilla? Yeah. yeah. There's vanilla in the chocolate article. <laughs> 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 I put it in. I did. I did. Vanilla is the only orchid that ever produced anything we can eat. The only orchid. And they found one, and then they kept it. And they kept it in, you know, without letting it um, hybrid so that it doesn't produce vanilla anymore. And the thing about it is that it only blooms at, 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 you know, for a couple of hours. It only it has to be then fertilized in those hours and then you might pollinated. get yeah, pollinated. You, and then you might get a vanilla bean. Okay? <laughs> Which means that what they did in the, when they have a, a plantation they take the, the vines, and these grow in the Amazon up, you know, up the huge trees, right? So they take them and put them on like 10-foot posts so that you don't have to climb the 200-foot Amazon tree to find if, if, the, if the flower has opened so that you can pollinate, you know? But it's, it's one a, species of orchid, not one particular plant. Well, actually, yeah. that was a question. Oh yeah. Orchids. Actually, it's, if you um, if, if, if you guys strange. would like to uh, see a vanilla orchid, they actually have some on display at the Atlanta Botanical Gardens mm -hmm. over in oh, Piedmont cool. Park here in Atlanta. Now, when you have a theobroma tree, I am so there because <laughs> actually, you can order it. theobroma pot. You, you can can't order, anymore. You can't get them. You used to be able to get them from uh, Florida. No, they do. They do they have, have a cocoa theobroma cocoa plant on display over there. At the National Botanical Garden. Uh, Few months ago, I took photos. I just checked on the their, internet. They had their big they had a chocolate e e e exhibition on the subject of chocolate. Yeah, that's that's not the same as me going on the internet and ordering it. That's what I'm saying. A year ago, you could order it from Puerto Rico, and they would mail you a cocoa pod. But they want any more? No, they no. apparently not. I don't know if it's customs or I don't know if the farm might have gone uh, bankrupt. Okay, there was there's a lot Homeland of Homeland Security. And since it was no, it was Puerto Rico, <laughs> yeah, so it was still know. domestic. You might, okay? you might get cocoa cocoa milk all over the baggage factory. Yeah, know. they're growing uh, it in uh, in Hawaii right now. Yeah, it's a funny, it's a perfect environment. They're getting higher yields than they've ever gotten before. Right, there are no. Parasites. There are three kinds of cocoa trees: the one that grows in Mexico, the one that grows in Brazil and the hybrid of the two. The one in Mexico has the best flavored chocolate, but it's very disease ridden, very susceptible to everything, especially fungus. The one that grows in Brazil doesn't seem to be allergic to anything, but the cocoa is only marginal. So the third one is the hybrid of the two that they were hoping, and it's not as good as the Criollo, which was the one from Mexico, okay? But those are the only three that there are. You know they'll keep playing genetic. They will. Mm -hmm. They'll try. They'll but the Criollo grows like 60 in, in Hawaii. None of which will help our people in 16. Not at all. Yeah, we're going to get gene splicing in 16. Yet again. <laughs> well, the nice thing is, I mean, Lester Murphy did a lot with pre-DNA crossbreeding. So if they get into varieties, they can sit there. They'll have to set up a plantation. You aren't going to be doing it in Nuremberg. 
I mean, unless they have a really big glass. Not in the Little Ice Age, which you know, is another panel we will be in doing. In fact, yeah, you're not even going to be doing it in, in um, um, what's the island? Right. Caribbean? The one off of Italy. Oh, Sicily. 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 Well, the other Sicily. problem you have is the days are too short. Well, yeah, in Sicily, they were growing sugar in Sicily until it started getting too cold. And then the Ottomans took over everything in Africa where they were growing sugar. That's why they went to the Caribbean to grow sugar. Okay, which is when sugar got expensive because it's from farther away. But then they were using slaves, so it was less expensive. Have you got your sugar book? No. Oh, oh well. All right. I, yeah, I, in the article I talk a lot about sugar. It's, uh, yeah, go um, ahead. At the time, were they just using cane sugar or did they have beet sugar? You don't want to even know about beet sugar. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, they were using cane beet. sugar because beet sugar is a pain in the ass. And well, if we don't have to use it, we, we won't don't use it. Somebody will. You know that. Somebody will, okay? And somebody will make money on it and they'll probably be Russian. Yes, the high okay. school. <laughs> yeah. The high school that Russia. Russia. her father gra graduated from was the West Jordan beet diggers. Yeah. Because they grew beet sugar there for That's their, that's their, uh, and, and that was school you and I stopped. sugar. Now, Utah doesn't grow beets. Idaho doesn't grow beets. You know, you know you and I sugar. There yeah. actually, yeah. In, in the series, there has been a story written that has uh, someone in England experimenting with developing sugar beets. They haven't been developed yet is the problem. Well, that's yeah, the, one of the problems. That's one of the problems. The other problem is getting the sugar out of the beets. Not as easy. With sugar cane, you get the piece of grass, which is about, Suck. yeah, you cut the piece of grass, you put it in a roller, it squeezes juice out, you boil the juice. You're done. You have sugar. Yeah, okay. you, use, you use the squeezed piece of grass. It's, it's green, but it's sugar. They ran right. steam engines on this. I stuff. went uh, about three years ago. I spent a week in the Allen Grenada, and we toured the oldest rum sure. rum, rum distillery yes. in the world, or at least in the New World. And it's fascinating to watch it because they're basically doing that. And they then cut the, yeah, yeah, and then they take it and, and then, then they go take right it go into further. Ferment. But yeah. the the equipment. <laughs> Such it, as it is. It is, it is. it is antique. I mean, it still is to this day. I mean, it's it's the they same. They build antique years. equipment. I don't think. No, but I mean, it's no. Just, I was in Brazil. I lived in um, I lived in Pernambuco. Okay, right in the center of the sugar plantations of the world. Okay, and I watched them. And you know, you go down on the market. We're I mean, miles away from the sugar. They just hold the sugar cane in. And they'll just squeeze it and give you, you can drink the sugar juice right there. You can, yeah. you know, they'll make rum on the street. They'll make, you know, I mean, it's it's that. And it looks like they built antique equipment. It's not up to date. It's wooden rollers and they just kind of crank the thing yeah. and then it rolls it through and you get juice and rats. On the, subject, <laughs> on the subject of sugar, which I guess is vaguely related to ch chocolate. Cho well, yeah, chocolate's uh, not much fun uh, without sugar. What, wasn't there some <laughs> talk also about sorghum sugar? Yes. Yes. I don't know if it's actually I know, it's been in an article. Yet another sure. article in the Gazette called White Gold, which yeah. is on the uh, on uh, about making sugar pay. And you had a question? Um, yeah, the the way you get the sugar out of the cane, do you have to have a machine or a crusher? Kind of a crusher. A hammer no, no hammer. It's, it's, like, a crush. it's, like, it's like the other machine. It's, it's, kind of it's not. It's not a machine. It's, it's a machine that they had at the time. Okay, it's yeah. not a hard thing to get. It looks they like a great. Sugar it looks like a great big old, you know, roller, roller for walk, uh, drying clothes. It just run it through. Donkey walking around this thing, and yeah, it's basically the same thing. It's ancient. But machine. that is right. not the only problem. It's not just getting the juice out of the cane or no. the juice out of the beet. The other thing you've got to do is. If